Guitars and surfboards spells fun, fun, fun. That's and right. tonight our program's entitled Surf <laughs> Up! Yeah, here at Baker Square. And with me this evening, one of our student performers is Sam Locastro. Sam, welcome to the program. Hello. And you're go to what school? Uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. I know Miss Holland out there. She's a terrific lady. And from what I understand, you're her number one student. <laughs> you don't have to be modest, Dan. We know. That's why you're here on this show. And your instructor's here too, right? From live music? Yes. And who is your instructor? John. John Fine. Let's give it up for John. <laughs> Woo! John. It, Sammy it, does, he plays Chuck Berry, he plays a lot of great things that John has shown him, and we're just really proud of Sam. Um, so to, without any further ado, we're going to go to John. He's going to tell us a little bit about uh, what surf music, how it originated and all that. But before we do, I just want to talk about our guests. We'd like to thank Jesse from Live Music, our bass player, also a teacher at Live Music, and Bob Nadler from Live Music. Thank you for joining us tonight, guys, and, and being supportive. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sam. A little traveling music. Anytime we get together, you're just a wealth of information. Yeah, An encyclopedia. Well, <laughs> well thank you, Rick. <laughs> so tell us about surf music. How did it originate? Okay, well, surf music originated in Southern California, uh, probably around 1959 or 1960, the roots of it. Uh, before that, it was just considered to be instrumental rock and roll. Uh, what made it specifically surf music were a couple of things. First of all, there was a big surf scene going on, on down there with actual surfers. And they had their rock and roll that they listened to. And uh, a guy that was working a lot playing for them in the ballrooms down there was a fellow by the name of Dick Dale. Oh, Dick Dale, and, yeah. And uh, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do one of his tunes. He got to be known as King of the Surf Guitar. Uh, now, surf guitar was characterized by a lot of double picking up and down. <laughs> Wow. Lots of vibrato bar and that kind of thing, and a whole bunch of reverb on the amp, and I'm going to turn, turn my reverb up just a little bit here, and uh, try to get that crashing wave sound. Now, the, re the amp reverb was actually developed back in the 1930s for Hammond organs. I didn't know that. Yeah, to keep the, uh, they, were, they were trying to sell Hammond organs to people in their houses. Mm -hmm. And it sounds a whole lot different in a house than it does in a church. It's true. <laughs> so they developed this uh, electronic reverb to simulate the sound of a big church in your living room. Wow. And it got used for Hammond organs and maybe for recording voices and things like that. And uh, Dick Dale got a hold of one ostensibly to use on his voice because he started out as a country singer, believe it or not. And uh, he started using this reverb unit on his voice, and he got the, got the idea to put it on his guitar. And, of course, it being rock and roll, it's like, let's crank this thing up and see what this baby will do. <laughs> Run it all the way up to 10. So instead of just a regular room reverb, you wound up with oh, the yeah. crashing wave. And the surfers all went, wow, that sounds like we're out there in the ocean on the waves. Cool. So it kind of caught on, and he started, uh, started writing instrumental stuff for them to dance to. One of the reasons the stuff caught on is that there weren't a lot of vocalists available to these amateur bands. So it got to be all instrumental stuff. Everybody goes, oh, surf music. Yeah, the Beach Boys, Jan and Dean. The vocal stuff came along a little bit later. The Beach Boys were basically a pop band who wrote songs about surfing. They weren't really a surf band. Very good stuff, great vocals, and Brian Wilson is a great songwriter and producer, but real, true, honest-to-God surf music is instrumental. You know, it was amazing to me, too, how surf music just caught on, like, all over the world. I remember being in Mexico City during the summers, 
and hearing these three-piece bands play this music that sounded just like the Ventures or something like that. And it was really exciting for me. They didn't, they didn't see the ocean in Mexico City, yeah. but yet they could duplicate that sound and they were playing it. It was so great to hear American music. The Ventures actually came along uh, uh, a year or so before surf music hit. They had, uh, they had a hit called Walk Don't Run, which we're, uh, we're going to play a little bit later. But right now I'm going to kick, uh, kick things off with Miseru. Dick Dale, forgive me. <laughs> Too. Oh, gosh. That's, that's the sound that got me wanting to play electric guitar exactly. in the first place. Exactly. Big old reverb. It was kind of the heavy metal of oh, its day because wow. it was loud, it was fast, it was exciting. It made me want to jump up and down and my parents hated it. It's fun too. It's <laughs> a lot fun oh to play. yeah. Oh it is. It really, yeah, it kind of kills my, uh, my fingernail <laughs> there because I've never been able to get the pick going fast enough. Dick Dale would literally melt picks. He picked so fast and so hard and used giant heavy telephone cable strings. <laughs> you know that sound carried over too like in TV shows like with Hawaii oh, yeah. Five-O oh, yeah. using that, that definitive guitar sound. And in movies like with James Bond, I mean who could forget the guitar part in James Bond? Oh yeah. <laughs> Once again, the characteristic sound of that double pick surf guitar is traveling up and down all on one string, mm. which that's the way Dick Dale did it. And it's probably the most inefficient way to play the guitar that there is. But, Linearly. But it's part of that sound. Yeah. And if you do it if, with, a, with a regular scale pattern going across the neck, it doesn't sound right. Mm. But it's a lot harder to do when you're <laughs> sliding up and down like that. God, I just, I, I love this music. It's just, The Shadows is another one that comes oh, to my yeah. mind. Oh, yeah. They were, now, they were an English band. Yeah. But, and I don't think you could really call them a surf band because they didn't really do any surf material. Like The Ventures, you can't really call them a surf band either, even though they did a surf album. And, and uh, The Beach Boys either, but, but yeah. yeah, it still defined that era. Absolutely. The Shadows did stuff like Apache. <laughs> by they Beautiful. used echo instead of reverb and I didn't bring an echo unit so <laughs> I have to use reverb to substitute but very sweet warm 
but still twangy guitar sound. And I loved that sound when I first heard it. Totally different from the American bands. You know, you talked about Echo. I was thinking of those old Echo Plexes, yeah. John. You remember those? Oh, yeah. And, and, and it actually ran on tape. Yep, so that's then, right. So it would make this big loop. And so sometimes you would have recorded something like three days ago, and here comes this <laughs> with the stuff that didn't fit what you were doing right, right now. It would come out of the Oh, up. my God. And then, you know, the tape, the way it was, it wasn't on reel to reel. It was just all like loose inside that there's a get tangled up sometimes and it would break oh, and boy gosh. those things were maintenance headaches they were oh but, my god but when they worked they were great oh yeah <laughs> now of course they have digital echo units yeah. you can get it in a little pedal about the size of this thing yeah that's right and these uh, echo plexes were like taking no moving parts yeah around and they cost as much as a good guitar did exactly Jeez. So, yeah, I never got to own one. It was only after the solid state ones started coming in that I actually was able to afford one. Anyway. Uh, How about Sam? Sammy, you want to play the, that yeah. song for us, Sam? Yeah. Sam, grab your guitar. This is a tune by a group called the Chantays, who were, I don't know if you could call them protégés of Dick Dale, but they sure had the Dick Dale sound down. Uh, the tune is called Pipeline. This was a giant hit back around 1962. And, uh, is this the one Johnny Smith? Because uh, you always talk about Johnny Smith doing one of those. No, that was Walk Don't Run. Walk we're going to get, yeah. get to that one a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. Walk, uh, okay. This is Pipeline. And it was written by the guys in the band. Oh. Uh, in, the, uh, in the Chantays. So without any further ado, let's do, uh, uh, let's do Pipeline. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> All right. Uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> guy's got big ears. He, he listens to everything. Uh, who do you, Sam, who do you like as far as modern bands go? Uh. <laughs> I know you like Chuck Berry and you like surf music and you like the Beatles and you like Pink Floyd. And, wow, that's uh, great, Sam. He's into everything. Can you do just a little just, bit of the Chuck Berry lick for us? That looks a little bit of that. No. Can you remember it? Okay, we'll, <laughs> okay. we'll, save, right. we'll save it for another time. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Sam LaCastro, ladies and Sam gentlemen. Sam LaCastro. Thank yeah. you, Sammy. Wonderful, wonderful. Boy, that sound, I just love it. You know, like, like that last song, it just speaks volumes to me. Oh, you know yeah. Th that uh, you were talking about surf music and how it turned you on. That very first chord for the Beatles, Hard Day's Night, is what did it for me. And it's oh, kind of yeah. like... <laughs> if I can remember it, I can't remember it here. It's something like... Uh, 
something like that. That's it's it. a hard day's night. I've been working like a dog. Anyway, yeah. that's uh, that's a little bit late because uh, uh, surf music. The Beatles killed surf music. Yeah, they did. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, and they and they didn't mean to, <laughs> but, you know, but yet they still had some really great instrumentals too. Oh, that kind of yeah. like, like uh, that boy, for instance. That that in the movie, it kind of had that little sound to mm -hmm. it that, that I remember from Surf. Mm -hmm. But gosh, so Surf music is was was really the United States that did it. It wasn't it wasn't another country that was really it's our music, right? Well, it caught yeah. We it originated in the United States, but it it, it caught it on all over the world, and it never died in Japan. The Ventures, who we're, uh, we're getting ready to do a Ventures tune coming up, and they, they actually, like I say, predated surf music by a year or two. Uh, but the Ventures got huge in Japan, and they've always been huge in Japan. They were as big as the Beatles. Mm. And for an instrumental mm. band. Yeah. I mean, today, you try to put an instrumental band on the radio, it doesn't always work. They always want vocalists yep. and stuff. But the in general those public days, tends to... That was so great to know that three guitars and drums yeah. could, could dominate the radio waves. It was, <laughs> it was great. Well, and I have a feeling that that's probably why it was so big in Japan, is that there wasn't a language barrier to uh, to overcome. There's, I think, a lot more Japanese people that understand English than there are American people that understand Japanese, but still, with instrumental stuff, there's no language barrier. So let's, uh, I'm going to reach around and turn my reverb down a little okay. bit to get more of an authentic Ventures kind of a sound. And... Uh, We'll do Walk, Don't Run. This is the original 1960, 1960 version. They remade it in 1964 as a surf tune with the, with the, with the, uh, with the double pick stuff. And, uh, uh, but this is the original version from 1960. Uh, yeah. Walk, Don't Run. Walk, I don't think run. you've got it. Uh, it's right here. It's on top. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> All right. You guys ready? You got the intro there, Bob? Right. Bob Nadler on the drums, ladies Bob and gentlemen. Bob Nadler. Yeah. Working with a band. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's really just like is. John and I. And <laughs> this is the first one of these shows that we've done with a rhythm with section. With a rhythm section. And it's great. I love it. <laughs> John keeps I being love a it. bass player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesse says no. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's what great. Should we, what should we call this band? <laughs> <laughs> Tonight it surfs up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Whatever they pay us to call it. <laughs> 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 we were going to do uh, Wipeout, right? You're going to yeah. do a song? Yeah. With the, Let's do with the full version with the drums? With the drums, yeah. This ought to be great. Well, I All remember right. this now one this, as a kid. This one was a, a great big huge hit for a group called the Safaris uh, featuring the drums. And funny story about this one. The, one of the first things that I learned to play on the guitar, before I got an electric, I started out on a nylon string classical guitar. My dad wanted me, wanted me to be a classical guitar player. And so he wouldn't let me start on an electric, and on my little nylon string, I figured out, you know, no reverb or nothing, just an, a, <laughs> an acoustic guitar. And my uncle came over to the house one day when I was practicing, and he said, show me what you've been playing. So I tried to explain to him about Wipeout, and I'm sitting there, I was his age, with this classical guitar that felt like it was as big as me, and I'm trying to play drums and bass <laughs> and guitar all at once on the same thing, on the same <laughs> instrument. I'm going, uh, beating on it to get the drums, and I'm trying to show, okay, this is Uncle Alan, this is where the drums come in, and, you know, and then the guitar does, and he's looking at me like, <laughs> So every time I would run into him after that, years and years later, if there was a guitar anywhere around, he'd make me play him Wipeout. <laughs> so Uncle Alan, this, this one's for, for you. you. <laughs> Kick it off there, Bob. That jazz feel come in there. <laughs> 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 the jazz feel. Yeah, there we go. Surf jazz feel. Yep. Confusion. Yeah. <laughs> you just do it on a stand-up bass down the wave. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Like, I, I thought you were playing with Ken Stout there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> just for about 45 seconds. Flashback. Flashback. Big band. Big band. <laughs> That's great. Anything else you want to tell us about surf music there, John? Well, like I say, it was its heyday was really from about 1960 through about 1964. When the Beatles came in, it changed everything. These uh, surf bands that were having great success all of a sudden couldn't get uh, couldn't get noticed because everybody wanted English. They wanted the bloody English bands. And if you didn't look English and sound English, 
you basically couldn't get on the charts there for about a year and a half. There were groups from, from your hometown of San Antonio, Texas, oh, yeah. the Sir Douglas Quintet. That's right, that's right. They were Texans for crying out <laughs> loud, but they had to call themselves the Sir Douglas Quintet and wear English suits and English haircuts, and they got on the <laughs> charts Nexler, that way. Yep, yeah, that's right, exactly. <laughs> John, do uh, you have a tr trivia question you want to ask our audience? Yep, I sure do. Now, we'll see if anybody knows the answer to this question. What is Dick Dale's real name? Okay, what is Dick Dale's real name? And if you call Live Music Center, the first three people that call Live Music Center at 448-1511 will receive, with the correct answer, will receive a kazoo from John and I and Speakeasy. Yep. And we'd like to thank you all so much for tuning in tonight and, and listening to surf music. And John, thank you so much. Sammy, wonderful job on that tune, buddy. Jesse, thank you so much. Bob Nadler over here on drums. Thank you, Bob, for that swinging version of Wipeout. And John, you're going to take us out with what? Well, uh, what have we got left? We've, have we done, have we done all of them? We've done those. Uh, we've done those. We did... Uh, uh, I'd like to hear him do that wipeout thing again. Yeah, Can what's we, the let's okay? One, two, a one, a two, a one a two, three. <laughs> This is the first one of these shows that we've done with a rhythm with section. With a rhythm section. And it's great. I love it. <laughs>